Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about how to use the SubD tool to quickly to make this rose pattern pendant. Are you ready? Let's get started. So I have the curve ready for you that I trace an image and you can use this one directly to practice along or create your own line. Uh, you can download this line at the description below. There's a link for sign up newsletter. It is in Rhino 5, so everybody that have a Rhino 5 and up can use it. But for the sub D, you will need to have a Rhino 7. So I'm going to copy this curve and we're going to start from scratch. So let's go into the top view and I'm going to use the past. And I'm going to move everybody to different layer. Okay, so it depends on how big you want this piece. You can scale it down proportionally to the size that you want. All right, so if you look at all those curves and reading on the right side on your property, those are, are the regular nerve curve, right? We have to turn those into the sub D first. So let's go ahead to pick up everybody and we want to use the rebuild command and we want to rebuild them into the last point. As you can, you know, the sub D is more nice and rounded. So all those points is actually not going to work. So make sure that when you rebuild it, you want to rebuild the last point. Point. So let's try 12 point and see how much difference is that. If you are okay with those to be nice and rounded on all the corner, then you can reduce even more. And also make sure that make sub D friendly is checked. So then we have those curve here. In fact, this one doesn't need to be so many points. So I'm going to rebuild that one more time. This one I actually want it to be less. So I click OK and then it will be even rounder. So check on individually like saying if this is going to be like a point and if it, will you still like it. It look like it's okay. So not all of them need to be 12 point. You just kind of need to judge it your, uh, by your own judgment. All right. So those now is the sub D curve. We're going to come in into our perspective and simply just extrude it for whatever, how high you want them to be. Right. So now we have a wall over there. We just need to close the top and the bottom. And the way to close the top and the bottom, the most easy way in the sub D, it's actually, it's called fill sub D hole. It's going to ask you to pick up the boundary here and then you hit enter. Now, if you have this four option right there, let's try one by one. Automatic, you will close something like that and see if you like it. And if you like it, that'll be fine. If you don't, then you might want to try other. Let's try the other one. This has more curve. Let's try something like this. It has a really big bend there. So we're going to use the, the same command. We're going to pick up the age, holding the shift, double click. You can select the all the whole age. If we use automatic, notice that it's closed, but it's actually, if you look from under, it's actually coming cover to the area that you don't want it. It's because it's a big curve over there, right? So in that case, we want to pick up the other option right here. So let's go ahead to pick up the H one more time. Let's try the second one. The second one is a single face, which instead of have a multiple face, you got single face. Usually this one work well when you have something right in the middle like this one, but for the big curve like that, it doesn't work well. So let's try the third one that we got here for the triangular fin, the same becoming with the one point. So that one doesn't work well. And then the very last one that we wanted to try is the triangulate. And this one work well there. Okay, so when you have a big turn like that, you want to use a triangulate and then you have, you know, something is more into the round shape, then you can try the single. Then I'm going to kind of uh, trying all of this on the top and not the one in the middle because they actually work better in other way. And we want to try all of them with the triangulate and I will get something like this. Right. This one, actually, I'm going to just using the automat automatic and it will have a nice and round things there. 
All right. So after you get this, uh, you can think about how you want to change it. If you like them to be all the way the same thickness, that's okay. But if you don't like it, for example, on this one, I do want the faces on the two end go down. So you can use the selecting the face on the sub D. You pick up this one, holding the shift and just bring them down like this. So then you have this curve there and you can do that for all of them. Like this one, you want to bring them down. Not only bring them down, you may want to rotate it as well. So it got the very nice curve over there. And then you can keep adding it into you, your own design until you satisfy with them, like something like this, right? So you can go in individually to do that. So now you have this two way you can close the bottom. The first, we are going to pick up the same thing that we're going to use the fill sub the hole. Another way, if you're not going to change in anything and you actually like to keep this really straight looking things, I'm going to use one as an example. Let's pick up this one sub the object and we are going to convert it into back to the nerve. And you hit enter. So this will be your nerve object over there. With the nerve object, you can use the cap command and simply close this. So this will be the solid. All right. So either way you can do it. Uh, one thing about using a sub D hole to close it is you're going to have something like this. I'm going to fill this up the hole and pick up everybody from the bottom. And I'm just simply just going to use a triangular for everybody. So notice that they get a little bit thinner. It's because it kind of folding it back there, right? So if you don't like that happen, I'm going to go back. You wanted to insert a line first. So we're going to pick up, oops. So we're going to pick up the loop on everything on the bottom. And just simply just adding one more line there, right? So this line right over here, it's going to prevent it has too much of a curve. So let's go ahead to use the fill sub D hole one more time. Pick up everybody here. Hit enter, triangulate. So now you can see it is not as rounded. It's having a little bit corner there. It's because we insert one more control over there. All right, so this is how we're going to use the sub D and depends on how you like to use this. You can flow into the B, you can um, do whatever. I simply just creating an outline by just creating a curve like border or something like this. Um, it's not as pretty, but it's one of the way to connecting all of them together. Or this is, could be on top of a signal ring or something like that. And I simply just have this one. Doesn't even need to use the sub D. And after that, I can simply just uh, extrude a planar curve straight going down like this. So then I have something behind it. And if you like, you can just uh, simply just fit it at edges. Let's pick up point two over here. Move it back, make sure this intersect so we can bowling union together. Let's take a look on the render view. All right. I mean, I know it's ugly, but just want to share with you how to use the sub D part. If you're really into the organic form and then you like the sub D, I do have a course just got released for the sub D for the jewelry design. And so let me know if you like to see more of this type of the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.